mobility. It has become a favored buzzword in the fitness industry over the last few years. With CrossFit blossoming into the eminent form of hobbyist exercise, a sport that borrows its challenges in part from Olympic weightlifting, there's been an accompanying surge of modalities and products, all touting their ability to help you move better. While that promise is rather vague, the implication is clear. Roll this, release that, and activate your way to a deeper, stronger overhead squat. Unfortunately, these promises end up being more hollow than they appear when you look beyond the sleek and sexy marketing and examine the evidence. For a sport like weightlifting that demands robust flexibility in multiple joints and high ranges of motion, a forward fold stretch followed by jumping on a lacrosse ball to work out that knot in your hip just isn't going to cut it. Static stretching is the classic prehab technique. For years, weightlifters, crossfitters, and powerlifters alike have been folding themselves up like pretzels in an attempt to make themselves more flexible. While there is a breadth of literature available espousing the effects of static stretching, upon closer analysis, the applicability of those effects become a little foggy. A 1996 study by Magnuson et al. found that static stretching causes a temporary change in the extensibility of the hamstrings through increased tolerance to the movement, not any type of cellular or structural alteration. This conclusion has been supported by various other studies. Static stretching can make you more flexible for a short amount of time, but the effects are often transient, stemming from neural adaptations and changes in pain tolerance, both of which have a relatively low ceiling for efficacy with regard to getting into good positions for the snatch or clean. Similar findings are reflected in research about SMR, or self-myofacial release, a modality involving applying manual pressure to a tissue with an implement to affect change, alleviate pain, and increase flexibility. The problem with this technique is a fundamental lack of understanding of it in the first place. There is a lot of conjecture, but very little substantiating evidence backing the purported effects. No one is able to explain in empirical terms what it means when they say they're using a lacrosse ball to release their hip flexor. A 2008 study by Chaudhry et al showcase that the pressure required to enact legitimate structural change to a tissue are well beyond what could be provided manually or through the usage of an implement such as a foam roller or lacrosse ball. However, in 2013, McDonald et al. showcased that you could apply manual therapy and experience an increase in range of motion, along with a decreased perception of pain. That keyword perception being the most relevant. There are multiple theories guessing at why SMR produces perceptual change in pain response. However, most of the current literature available concedes that these practices do not produce lasting physiological change within the tissues with respect to achieving desired increases in range of motion. In Weightlifting Movement Assessment and Optimization, Dr. Quinn Hennick answers the question, what causes permanent changes in structure? Repetition, load, and time. Short bouts of SMR and or stretching can augment that, but it's probably the least important component. So if the person who does their yoga and writhes around on their foam roller is also diligent about spending time with the barbell and focusing on their technique under resistance, their mobility will undoubtedly improve, but they'll regrettably attribute it to the mysticism of their mobility work and not their efforts pursuing perfection of the desired movement. Using the barbell as the mobility tool of choice isn't such a foreign concept if you know what to look for. It's very common in training halls at international weightlifting competitions to see athletes modifying common stretches to incorporate a lightly loaded barbell. Pancaked or seated good mornings, round back, stiff-legged deadlifts, and various altered tempo movements and holds are performed regularly to help lifters maintain the requisite mobility in the relevant postures. In a perfect world, the unloaded or lightly loaded overhead squat with a barbell is the only thing you'd need to perfect that pattern, but accommodations must be made. Regressions to friendlier versions of the movement pattern isn't something to be avoided. Do not be afraid to seek out implements or equipment that may temporarily better suit your needs.
the only thing changing the effects of loaded movements is the dosage and intensity at which they are used. Any exercise with any implement can be either therapeutic or hazardous. It all depends on the context of its application. My suggestion, instead of shying away from the thing you have to do and scrambling to either mash or scrape the pain away before starting the workout, try being patient, trusting your body to acclimate to the demand and utilize the movement as the treatment instead of seeing it as the ailment. If you're getting a pinch here or a twang there, sure, work it out for 30 seconds between sets, but don't mistake that temporary relief for being the long-term remedy. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments or criticisms, please feel free to use the comment section below. Thank you again.